Welcome all. Today I will be dealing with lasers and its application in the field of considered industry and aeronautics. As you all know, lasers have numerous applications in medical as well as in dental field. There is rapid scientific advancement in the field of laser technology. For the efficient clinical application of lasers, a modern dentist should have a thorough understanding of the basics of laser and its biological tissue responses. Laser is an acronym for light amplification by the stimulated emission of radiation. Laser light is different from normal regular light. Normal light as produced by the sun or a table lamp is diffused and not focused. However, laser has a single wavelength and it can be focused into a very narrow beam. Now let us have a brief look into the history of laser development. In 1916, Albert Einstein discovered the theory of spontaneous emission of radiation which is considered as the basis for laser generation. In 1960, Theodore Mayman introduced the first laser that is the ruby laser. In 1964, Stern and Goldman introduced lasers into the field of dentistry. Now let us discuss some basics of laser physics that is how a laser beam is produced. Light is a form of electromagnetic energy that travels at a constant velocity in form of waves. The basic unit of light is called a photon, which means a particle of light. Now we shall discuss on the interaction of photon with an atom. This figure shows an atom with a central nucleus containing protons and neutrons which revolving around it are the electrons within the shell. Now, when an atom is struck by a photon, there is an energy transfer causing an increase in the energy of the atom. This process is termed as absorption. The photon then ceases to exist and the electron in the terminal shell known as the valence electron is pumped from the ground state to a higher energy level. That is, the atom is now in an excited state. However, in the excited state, the electron is unstable and will soon decay back to the ground state, releasing stored energy in the form of an emitted photon. This process is termed as spontaneous emission. This diagram depicts the three processes involving laser beam generation. The first two processes we just now discussed that is absorption and spontaneous emission. In absorption, as already mentioned, when a photon hits an atom in lower energy state or ground state, there is energy transfer and the atom jumps to a higher energy state or excited state. In spontaneous emission, the atom in an excited state jumps back to the ground state emitting a photon. Now the third process that is stimulated emission we can see two photons are released if additional quantum of energy is absorbed by an already excited atom. Stimulated emission can occur only when incident photon has exactly the same energy as the released photon. These emitted photons can energize more neighboring atoms which would emit additional identical photons. This process continues as a cycle resulting in an amplification of the light energy. As this process continues, a state is reached when the number of atoms in the excited state are more than the number of atoms in the ground state, then a phenomenon known as population inversion occurs, which is a necessary condition for the production of a laser beam. Now coming to the unique properties of laser, which differentiate the laser from the normal light. First is, laser beam is monochromatic, means laser is having a single wavelength. That's why laser beam has one specific color. However, normal sunlight or white light is polychromatic. That means it contains a spectrum of wavelength. Laser is collimated, that is having specific spatial boundaries and a very low divergence, ensuring constant size and shape of the beam. However, normal light, as you know, it is non-collimated or mostly divergent. Next, laser is coherent. Now, coherency means light waves produced by a laser have specific form of electromagnetic energy which is in phase with one another that is different photons of lasers is having the same amplitude and are almost identical however normal light is non-coherent next laser beam produced is intense in nature that is they have energy that's why laser shows different effects when applied over a living tissue next section is on the laser unit design the laser unit consists of following components. First is laser medium or active medium. It is the source of atom. It can be either solid, liquid or gas. The laser medium determines the wavelength of emitted light from the laser. 
the laser medium is encased by an housing tube or optical cavity which may be made up of metal or ceramic or both next is laser pumping energy that is the external power source which excites or pumps the atom in the laser medium into a higher energy level third component is the mirrors it consists of two types of mirrors one is fully reflective and the other one is partially reflective that are located on the either end of the optical cavity and allows reflection of the photon of light in back and forth direction across the chamber the laser beam is emitted through the partially reflective mirror coming to the laser delivery system basically there are two types of delivery system first one is flexible hollow tube which contains a flexible hollow tube having an interior mirror finish the laser energy is reflected along the hollow tube and exits through a handpiece at the surgical end with the beam striking the tissue in a non contact mode that is without directly touching the tissue second type is glass fiber optic cable it is a glass tube encased in a resilient sheath it is fragile and non flexible this system can be used both in contact as well as in non contact mode next let us discuss on the laser emission modes that is how a laser beam is emitted or applied over the target tissue there are different modes for this first one is continuous mode here laser beam will be emitted at a constant power level continuously once we activate the laser unit second is gated pulse mode here there is periodic on and off by a mechanical shutter in front of a laser beam that is laser is emitted intermittently next is free running pulse mode in this mode high energy of laser light is emitted for a few mill microsecond followed by a relatively long time gap next mode is focus mode or the cut mode here laser beam hits the target tissue at its focal point or the smallest diameter so laser energy will be concentrated in that particular area and it helps in cutting of tissue as the laser is moved along next is defocus mode or ablation mode here laser beam hits the target tissue away from the focus spot so the beam size hitting the tissue has a greater diameter and causes wider area of tissue vaporization helping in ablation of tissue contact me mode means laser fiber tip is placed in direct contact with the tissue non contact mode the laser fiber tip is placed away from the target tissue without touching the tissue next we shall discuss on the tissue responses to lasers the light energy from a laser beam can have different tissue responses or interactions with the target tissue depending on two principal factors first one is wavelength of the laser light and second one is the optical properties of the target tissue first interaction of laser is reflection that is the laser beam reflecting or redirecting itself away from the tissue surface and having no effect on the target tissue second response is absorption that is laser beam fully absorbed by the target tissue absorption produces maximum effect on the tissue this absorption depends on the tissue characteristics such as the amount of water and level of pigmentation as well as on the laser parameters like the wavelength and emission mode of the laser that is used third response is transmission that is the target tissue allows the laser beam to pass through it entirely so there is no effect on the target tissue final response is scattering that is the laser beam is scattered within the tissue causing thermal damage so scattering weakens the energy of the laser beam and produces no useful biological effect now let us discuss on the various effects of laser light on living tissue the first effect is photochemical effect it is actually laser biostimulation that is stimulatory effect of laser light on biochemical and molecular process that normally occurs in the living tissue second effect is photomechanical this effect is produced by two mechanisms first is photodissolution that is breaking apart of structures by laser light second mechanism is photoacoustic that is removal of tissue with shock wave generation this mechanism is followed for root canal irrigation using the laser known as photoacoustic streaming third effect is photothermal effect this effect is also produced by two means first is photoablation that is removal of tissues by the vaporization second is photopyrolysis that is burning away of the from tissue completely this mechanism is mostly used in soft tissue surgery especially in periodontics final effect is photoelectrical effect this effect is induced by photoplasmolysis that is the tissues are removed through the formation of electrically charged ions now let us see the different types of lasers commonly used in endodontics
First one is NDAG laser. It is the first laser designed exclusively for dentistry. It has a solid active medium containing a crystal of yttrium aluminium garnet, doped in neodymium. The wavelength is 1064 nanometer, which corresponds to the infrared spectrum. So the laser beam will be invisible. It is fiber optically delivered in a pulse mode and is most often used in contact with the tissue. The pulsed NDAG laser is ideal for soft tissue procedures and root canal sterilization. It can also be used for treatment of dental hypersensitivity as well as pulp capping procedures. That one is diode laser. It is a solid state semiconductor laser that uses a combination of aluminium, gallium and arsenide as the active medium. Wavelength is 800 to 980 nanometer. It is fiber optically delivered in continuous or pulse mode and used commonly in contact with the tissues. It has the advantage of being compact, portable and economical. It is poorly absorbed by two structure. Hence, soft tissue surgery can be safely performed in close proximity to dental heart tissues. Diode laser light is well absorbed by pigmented tissue and is a good soft tissue surgical laser indicated for precision cutting and coagulation of gingiva. Next one is carbon dioxide laser. It is a gas active medium laser containing carbon dioxide. Wavelength is 10,600 nanometer. It is delivered through a hollow tube system via handpiece and cannot be delivered in a fiber optic tip. It is highly absorbed by both hard and soft tissues and has a shallow depth of penetration. It is not suitable for hard tissues due to the deleterious thermal absorptive effect on the pulp. It is considered as an ideal laser for soft tissues and especially useful in cutting dense fibrous tissues. Next laser is erbium yak and erbium chromium by SPC. It is an example for a hard tissue laser. Erbium yak is a solid active medium crystal containing yttrium aluminium garnet that is doped with erbium. Erbium chromium by SPC contain yttrium, scandium, gallium, garnet doped with erbium and chromium. Wavelength erbium yag is 2940 nm and erbium chromium by SPG it is 2790 nm. Laser is delivered through a fiber optic system in pulse mode. This wavelength cannot be easily transmitted along the glass fiber thus making the system less flexible and highly expensive. This wavelength has the highest absorption in water and have a high affinity to hydroxyapatite. They are ideal for hard tissue cutting and drilling. That is, they can be used as laser drills for caries removal and tooth preparation procedures. Argon laser. It has an active gas medium containing argon. Two emission wavelengths are there. 488 nanometer that is blue in color and 540 nanometer that is blue green in color. It is mostly delivered through a fiber optic system in a continuous as well as a pulse mode. The 488 nanometer emission is the exact wavelength needed to activate camphorophan, which is the photo initiator in the nerve composites. This laser is used to cure light activated composites, light activated impression materials, and bleaching gel. The 540 nanometer wavelength has the highest absorption in hemoglobin and is used for its good hemostatic capabilities, especially in soft tissue procedures. Next, we will be discussing on the applications of lasers in consolidated industry. So the first application is diagnosis of dental caries. Actually, these are the recent advances in the caries diagnosis. First one is laser autofluorescence. It is used for detection of smooth surface and fissure caries at an early stage. Argon laser emitting blue-green light detects caries lesion and its extent of demineralization. Second is quantitative laser fluorescence. Detects incipient caries lesion. Here also argon laser is used emitting blue light which identifies caries with difference in the fluorescence over the sound and the caries area. Next one is Diagonat. It is a recently designed instrument to facilitate the detection of dental caries by emitting a non-ionizing laser beam at a wavelength of 655 nanometer. Used for detection of caries on occlusal as well as on the smooth surface. Here a diode laser is used to identify caries with increased fluorescence over the sound tooth. Next application is in cavity preparation. The laser drill has been successful in replacing the conventional burr for cavity preparation. Hard tissue lasers like the erbium lasers are most commonly used for this tooth preparation procedures. Next application is restoration removal. 
the erbium yak laser is capable of removing cement, composite resin and the glass anomaly. Next application is etching. As an alternative to the acid etching of enamel and dentin, the erbium yak lasers produce micro explosions during hard tissue ablation that results in microscopic and macroscopic irregularities. These micro irregularities make the enamel surface micro retentive and offers a mechanism of adhesion without the need for acid etching. Next use is photopolymerization of composite resin. So already we have discussed the argon laser at 480 nanometer is used because it corresponds to the absorption maximum of camprofenone that is the photo initiator. Next use is prevention of dental caries. Argon lasers can be used for prevention of dental caries. Mechanism attributed is increase the resistance to dental caries by reducing the rate of demineralization of enamel dentin. This can be attributed to the photo ablation effect whereby the surface of enamel is vaporized and forms a dense surface layer that is resistant to demineralization. Next application is in treatment of dental hypersensitivity. So there are two mechanisms proposed for this. First mechanism is direct effect of laser radiation on the electrical activity of nerve fibers within the dental pulp. That is it blocks the depolarization of the nerve fibers. The second mechanism is modification of tubular structure of dentin by melting and fusing of the hard tissue or smear layer and subsequent sealing of the dentin tubules. NDAG, carbon dioxide and diode lasers are the most commonly used lasers for the, the treatment of dental hypersensitivity. Next is treatment of tooth erosion. Carbon dioxide lasers have been mostly used due to its efficient interaction with the hydroxyapatite crystals and thereby increasing the enamel resistance to demineralization. Next use is in optical impression. This technology eliminates the need for conventional intraoral impression material. Laser scanners take an optical impression of a prepared tooth and the opposing dentition and they take a bite registration to produce an interactive three-dimensional image. So it is actually a digital impression technique that is used for digital smile designing and CAD CAM technology. Next we will be discussing on applications of lasers in endodontics. The first application is laser analgesia. Research studies have shown that the pulsed NDAG laser can be used as an analgesia in endodontics. So the mechanism attributed is the wavelength of the laser it interferes with the sodium channel pump then it alters the nerve membrane permeability and temporarily blocks the depolarization of C and A nerve fibers that is found in dental pulp. Second use is in pulpal diagnosis. Okay, so in that the first one is laser Doppler flowmetry. It is a non-invasive method used to assess blood flow in microvascular system. It uses helium, neon and diode lasers at a low power setting. It is based on the Doppler principle to measure the blood flow in the pulp. So laser Doppler flowmetry gives an accurate status of the pulp vitality. Second one is in thermal testing. For the heat test for detecting the pulp vitality, we commonly use the heated gutta percha sticks. However, research studies have demonstrated that pulsed NDA laser shows better pulpal response than the hot gutta percha. Next application is in pulp capping and pulpotomy. Lasers can be used for pulp capping and pulpotomy procedures as laser has the ability to coagulate and seal small blood vessels and leads to potentially bloodless field. The area will be sterile after interacting with laser and will have an improved prognosis. Next use is in pulpectomy. The lasers commonly used are NDAG, Erbiag and diode laser. Next application is in root canal treatment. Treatment. And it has been found that lasers can be used in all phases of root canal treatment. So the first step is access capture preparation and root canal orifice enlargement. In this, erbium chromium YSDG and erbium YAG lasers are commonly used. Second is root canal wall preparation. Erbium chromium YSDG, erbium YAG and NDAG lasers are commonly used in this step. The laser is activated only after the fiber tip reaches the Apex and the fiber optic tip is guided in contact with the root canal wall in an apical to coronal direction with a rotary movement. Next is root canal irrigation. Laser irrigation are done in straight, slightly curved and wide canals. 
erbium chromium YSGG, erbium YAG and ND YAG lasers are used. Normal root canal irrigants such as 5.25 sodium hypochlorate and 17% EDTA should also be used along with the laser for better cleaning of the root canal system. Next is root canal disinfection. Pulp space therapy will fail if pathogenic bacteria persist in the canal even after thorough cleaning and shaping. This occurs mostly due to the complex nature of the root canal system and presence of smear layer etc. NDAG, Erbiag, Ergem Chromium, YSDG, Argon, Diode and Carbon Dioxide lasers are used to disinfect the dental tubules and root canals. NDAG and Diode lasers has been found to be successful in root canal disinfection due to their good penetration into the intraradicular dentine. Next is obturation. Argon, Carbon Dioxide, NDAG lasers have been used to soften or plasticize the gutta percha. Recent studies indicate that argon lasers produce a very good apical seal. Next application of laser is in endodontic retreatment. The rationale of using laser in non-surgical endodontic retreatment may be ascribed to the need to remove foreign material, especially the previous obturation material from the root canal system, which is difficult to achieve by the conventional methods. ND YAP laser, that is neodymium doped with yttrium aluminium perovskite laser, is widely used in root canal retreatment cases. NDAG laser is used to remove gutta percha from the root canals. Next is periapical surgery. Lasers are currently used with good results in periapical surgery for apex resection or improving apical seal after apicectomy or retrofilling. Use of erbium yang lasers resulted in improved healing and diminished post-operative discomfort. Lasers have the ability to coagulate and seal the blood vessel, thus enabling a bloodless surgical field. They also provide sterilization of the surgical site. Next use is in bleaching. It is a widening process achieved by chemical oxidation. Lasers commonly used for bleaching are carbon dioxide laser, NDAG laser, argon laser, diode laser and KTP laser that is potassium, titanium and phosphate laser. So to conclude, the future for lasers in the industry is really promising. Lasers have revolutionized the field of dentistry by providing the clinicians the ability to better care for patients with advanced diagnostic methods and improved treatment techniques. Thank you.